and thank you so much for joining me here on Susted Checks. Today, I'm going to be doing a review of a, another Junji Ito horror manga. This is a collection called Fragments of Horror. And this was honestly my number one favorite of like random stories. This is really, really thin comparative to the other books. But like just, it had so many really good ones. Like this was... This was different than the other ones, and I really liked it. Two things before I even get into the review. So the cover is glossy, and you can't see it very well on camera, but this, like, embossed glossiness is the other images from the manga, from other chapters. And it has so many different pieces. Like, this is the guy from Head, where she wants to keep his severed head. There's the fish. And I just really like that she incorporated it into the scream. Especially because he is screaming. But also from the painting, it's not him that's screaming. It's the world that's screaming. So I don't know. Just the idea that there's like a double, like some kind of double joke here that I really enjoyed. And like this is just beautifully done. I love the color. It's very watercolor. It's just so pretty. And that's just the dust jacket. The book itself is glorious. It's black with silver. Like, look at that. All the details. It's this spooky nightmare from this mold shit growing from, like, apparently, like, a witch or some shit. Who fucking knows? But it's spooky, and I love it. Like, I want that as, like, a poster because that's cute. But yeah, so this one has some stories, like, that are really weird. They are their own thing, and I find them very interesting. Um, apparently there was, like, the Junji Ito was concerned about this collection. Like, someone didn't really want him to do it or something. I'm not really sure. But, like, it's really good. It's got a couple, like, quite a few chapters. So there's Futon, which is this story about, like, this guy who cheats or some shit. Um, at, right after he gets met right after he gets married or right before he gets married and she's apparently a witch and she curses him but it's not really it's just mold that tries to kill him or some shit it's fucking weird it's trippy as hell some hallucinogenic shit i really like that one it's the start of it all so it starts off pretty solid like whoa i'm losing it i'm losing it Which, I didn't read the back because it's really short, but... An old wooden mansion that turns on its inhabitants. Ooh. A dissection class with a most unusual subject. A funeral where the dead are definitely not laid to rest. Ranging from the terrifying to the comedic, from the erotic to the loathsome, these stories showcase Junji Ito's long-awaited return to the world of horror. Which, that was another issue. When he first wrote Futon, they were worried about him, like, actually being, like, adequate at horror again. Like, let me see if I can find it. Um. Bum, 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 you guys. Okay. And I'll just read the whole afterword. How about that? We'll read the afterword. We're going to read today. Afterword. So this is my first collection of horror stories in eight years. Ever since I put on Shin Yami no Koi Kaiden in 2006. During those eight years, I was doing plenty of work on illustrations and manga about cats or about society. But even taking that into account, the time seems too empty somehow. What on earth was I doing all that time? Well, I do remember a bunch of things like some really detailed work and a busy private life but even still eight years it is true that I'm not as strong as I used to be and I couldn't work any faster than than I was but I feel like I wasted a whole lot of time during this period Mr. Toshiyasu Harada my editor a man who had been so good to me for so many years at Asahi Sonorama passed away I wanted to work with Mr. Harada again, so when he passed away, he left a gaping hole in my heart. Oh, and a few hours after Mr. Harada left us, our cat, Yonsuki, also died. The model for the monster cat, Yon 
that shows up in my cat manga. It might be a coincidence, but I experience it as a mysterious sort of connection. And so, a collection of horror stories after eight years. When he saw my first storyboard for the first story, Futon, my editor, Yoshida, got worried and called me. He felt that my instincts for horror hadn't returned. I don't know if it was because I hadn't drawn horror in such a long time, but it was indeed a sub subpar storyboard. I redid the whole thing, but it still didn't quite come together for me. It was a reluctant start to my first horror serialization in some time. I went on to draw six more stories after that, so maybe in the end my horror instincts have returned? At any rate, I am very happy to have this collection published. I want to offer my sincerest division, my sincerest gratitude to everyone in the Nimuki editorial division who gave me this opportunity, starting with my editors, Mikio, Yoshida, and Makiko Hara, and to Kitsuki Minahara of Rocket Bomb, who did the cover design. Okay, the cover design, folk, they are fucking baller. This was good. I love this cover. This is beautiful. But the cover and the dust cover. The cover cover is my favorite, but the, the dust cover is really well done. Like, I love that. Ah, gotta do the adjustment here. Ah. Junji Ito, April 30th, 2014. But, yeah, like, Futon is really short. It's like... 11 pages. It's 11 pages. That is nothing. That is nothing. But I love it. Futon is actually good. I hate that he doesn't love it, but I really like it. I thought it was a good start because it's trippy and it's so different. This collection just feels different. And that's what I love about this one. Like, the next story is called, um, The Wooden Something. It's the wood something, the wooden spirit, that's it. And it's got, like, this creepy witch lady who wants to, like, fuck the house. She just wants to fuck the house. And so here you have some pictures of the house turning into a secret dimension. And it's like, what the hell? Then you have a psychic lady who's, a, of course, the terror reader is a witch. And the one criticism I have here is, like, they could have picked so many better cards. She comes at him, and the card she uses to try and cut off his head is the death card. And I felt like they could do so much better. Hell, maybe she could have even used the Queen of Swords because she's fucking creepy. Like, look at her. I mean, she's not that she's ugly. It's just... I don't know. They were like, have you seen the Love Witch? If you've seen the Love Witch, they were like, okay, copy, paste, boom. We got a witch. Give her long black hair, a shroud, and make her use the death card to cut off his head like a psycho. No, it's already cut off with her hair, which, I mean, I respect that. I got some Medusa hair myself sometimes. And I know people with Medusa hair that I basically have to yell at. But, you know, it's whatever. There's bugs. This one is just generally, like, body horror and insects. And it's just ridiculous. It does end comedically, though, because it's like, he, he felt so, like, petrified from the whole experience of almost losing his head that he can't put his arms down. And that's personally just, like, freaking hilarious. This does have the, um, a couple stories that I didn't like from the anime and I didn't like in the book, which is, you know, that's fair. But it does have this one short weird one that's Dissection Chan. They called her Dissection Chan. And they called the person who became a doctor Dissection Kun. Because they were dissecting things. Because she seemed like a little psychopath. Like a little sociopath kind of weirdo. Wanting to dissect people. And then her stomach hurt really, really bad. And so then as she got older, she developed a dissection kink. And once they finally got to dissect her, they found out all the shit she'd cut up throughout the years was inside her. So the trippy shit just keeps on coming. Like, this was some very LSD-fueled book. And I really liked this book. It was so spooky. You had time-traveling bird lady who would feed you pieces of yourself to keep you from dying. 
and you had a fucking psychotic uh, cross-dresser who kidnaps people. You had the Whispering Woman, which I like that one personally. I really like the Whispering Woman. The other story I really, really like is the Rib Woman, but I don't think that one was in here. But the Whispering Woman's really good because it's this girl who has a severe mental issue and she can't do anything by herself. She's like, when I sit down, should I sit down cross-legged? Should I sit down with my legs crossed? Should I sit down with my ankles crossed? How should I sit down? Should I sit down quickly or slowly? And, like, she gets, she's lost. She needs help. So they hire someone to tell her what to do every minute of the day. And she does. She just stands there and narrates. And they think it's her being able to live out the opposite of her life because the woman who does it is in a super, like, tra tragically abusive relationship. And he, she ends up getting killed by this relationship. But she ends up coming back as a ghost and telling the girl to kill him. Which is just really funny to me. Just like, I don't know. But overall, this is like a really good collection. It's a different collection than the other stories. Like this one just feels so... I don't know. This one's really good. I really enjoyed this one because it's just so different than the others. They, don't, they just have a different atmosphere and a different, like, quality. And all the imagery is just spooky. And I really like that. Like, the other, the other books are scary or weird or sci-fi, but this, this one was really good because it's so different. But, yeah, I will link it down in the description below if you would like to get yourself a copy. If you've read it, let me know. Like, talk about it. I want to hear all right. Thank you guys. Bye. Have a wicked evening. See you here next time.